Alrighty, good afternoon guys. Happy weekend, happy Friday. We made it. A uh, really fun week. I think when you when you look to summarize this week, it's just risk on, right? We were very, very risky, even with uh, so much data coming out on Thursday with Europe, US CPI numbers. Uh, we decided to take the numbers at face value in in this transitory sort of uh, Fed approach that they've been giving us of it, this inflation is going to be short term, it's going to be short lived, and we'll go back to some sort of average of 2% inflation. Right now we're at 5% inflation. It seems like everyone is very willing to take advantage of that, which, oh, what is this? We got a mariachi band playing in my hallway. Oh, I don't know if you guys heard that. Okay, interesting. Okay, interesting. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, we have these numbers and my approach has been that take advantage of the inflation and the fact that it means growth right now for specifically these value companies, right? That approach has now been taken from value to let's just fucking buy everything because everything is going to grow because of this boom that we're seeing, right? It's, it's not so much that we should worry about what are the repercussions after the boom ends, right? Yes, the economy can only reopen once, but what does that put us on for a trajectory to continue and to come? And it seems like there's just this belief that, you know what, we are doing more spending than ever. The prices are reflecting that, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. And I don't think it's a bad thing, and that's why I've had this approach that it's going to be different this time, and we should continue to be bullish. And this week was the first week that we've gotten confirmation after those numbers came out. I think that yesterday was very surprising. I think it's... Uh, in terms of the market's reaction, surprising. I didn't find it uh, surprising in terms of my own opinion, uh, but it is nice to get that confirmation. So when we look at the different areas in which really put points on, we can start it with really the mega caps, and we finally see moves like Amazon coming out of a low. When we talk about these inflationary pressures, a company like Amazon is the one that would truly benefit from it, you would think. And so... When we see the the bid come in this week from Amazon, even then going through Thursday, uh, this is the exact sort of thing that I'm looking for. And this is what we want to be a part of. When you take a trade like this, right? Uh, we've been in mega caps for a few weeks now, for a few weeks. And we've continued to buy them at lows and continue to stay in the position no matter what. That has paid off significantly this week. So I don't know if you guys were in this position or not, but it's this kind of position that it may take time and it may fail over and over, but you're not really losing anything but time, right? You get stopped out, whatever it is. And then once it actually comes through and, and that confirmation is there, right? It's a lot of profit. And really it's the upside potential hereafter that matters, right? And so with all these, all of these mega caps, really Google again being the, the leader of all this, it's... It's allowed us to get into all-time high on the S&P once again. So we've traded the last few days through all-time highs, right? And where we're going is, again, this place that we continue the trend because there's no data coming up. And so if we're willing to buy here, we'll be willing to continue to buy, uh, you know, up here, right, on the same trend. And so uh, I think we're going to have a few weeks here, a few weeks here of this of this trend. I don't. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we we have a lot of sort of uh, income when we try to look at like the color of candles here, it doesn't matter. I think we're just going to see a lot of higher lows now that we've seen this data in the reaction. And a lot of that, is, again, is going to be led by these mega caps. I took it as far as when we looked yesterday at sort of clean energy, the green side of the equation. We saw things like sun power, FSLR, uh, solar really start to get going. We have seen the retail tickers continue to have bid amc for instance another 15 percent today but again all of the tickers continuing to get demand and there's no volatility really involved with it and so there's just this overall growth buy and so i even incorporated tesla with some calls at the end of the day uh we've been trading neo for a couple weeks right uh neo's done very well for us it's from the china angle and it seems to be taking some market cap from tesla but i even then just sort of you know, after this sort of confirmation we got this week, I said, you know what, fuck it, because 
the chart's tightening, the chart is terrible, and there's really only one way for this, really for price to go here. And I wanted to put risk on this weekend, right? So here's one of the risk on trades uh, that I just put on at the end of the day. I did not put it on earlier. This is really the last day, our last trade of the day I put on. Um, there's, a, of course, a lot of trades that we're taking today. We we talked a lot about today was going to be a day to take some risks. Uh, I'm just so fully positioned on on some passive, you know, value-oriented banks, energy, slow, uh, mega caps. Again, you don't really do much. And so most of my focus has been very long-term. Today, I was like, I want something that's I'm cashing out on Monday for a gain. Uh, and so there there are multiple uh, tickers like that. Uh, some some of our, our trades got a little converted. We look at something like X. We've been in this position for about a week now again. Uh, this is not so much that put the trade on today into Monday. Uh, we still have this very strong commodities angle, which is just sort of the important point here. Uh, things like uh, when we look at equities that are tied to gold, for instance, I, I like my J -Nug Nugget charts. Those have continued to do well. So they've been very passive, though. They're not very uh, swing oriented. And so this week was not so much uh using some of the old guard of tickers that we use for volatility and, and swing trades we had to convert it a little bit the the one area we did get to keep was travel so i put a ton of travel on again uh anything that i did not put on yesterday uh there was a few instances where uh the morning kind of kind of was a little rough and so i had to put new positions on uh al was a good example of that and so the win trade had continued from yesterday but the same thing happened on this trade going into the morning where it comes back into support. I just held through basically all of this sort of volatility in the morning because, uh, again, there's not much downside risk here and the upside is just, there's too much, right? Uh, and so travel got pushed over again. Uh, everything got pushed over, but we added some of these, uh, the, the greener look of things. And so I did post the FSLR chart and I talked about it yesterday. I didn't, I, I wasn't sure what, exactly i wanted to do with this and so of course i i drew out the sun power chart yesterday just live and was looking at it and dicking around with it this is sort of the the culmination of it here looking at fslr so if we just uh, if you take a look at this chart compared to what i did live uh with sun power right you can tell the uh it's a lot more f defined uh in what we're looking for and so the the difference though is that the sun power chart does have a lot more upside because it really dug a hole um and, and so we'll see what the, the difference is between that. Uh, you, again, you can kind of see the, the, the angular difference. It, it's, it's a little bit flatter here. So the FSLR chart offers a little bit better of a lead. We'll see what exactly these play out. I did take this trade uh, going into the weekend. This is still fully full risk. It's just completely risky. There's nothing great about it. Uh, the charts are breaking out, but it's sort of breaking out on, on nothing. There's nothing there. All it is is price. And so, you know, I'd love to just trade on price, but with something like this area of the market that we know is very sensitive to different information coming out, timelines, the government still hasn't figured out what they're doing with their packages. Uh, it looks like uh, the infrastructure plan where we're settling around like $1 trillion right now, and it doesn't really include clean energy uh, too much. And so we're gonna have to wait for another clean energy bill, which will happen. It's just how quickly. And so those things are still sort of negatives drawing down uh, some of these charts from the highs from before, right? With, once we realized the timeline was gonna be a little subdued. Uh, and so we have to be careful with that. And that's why it's fully just risk. It's just risk, there's nothing wrong with taking a nice risk trade. Uh, when you're very well positioned, right? And so that's really what what I wanted to do. Uh, there are some other trades from from yesterday's list that I posted uh, that we were able to sort of get a part of. When when we talk about these these software companies, right, uh, and tech companies, uh, we've continued to look at them. Momo, I already posted the other uh, the other day and updated it again. Uh, RNG, for instance, these sort of again, there there's something about them that you know they're just risky trades, right? And it's nice to go take that over the weekend when that's why everyone else is buying it as well, right? People are not buying this because they believe in it. They buy it because they want to make money on it. And when you have a ticker that's fully fledged by profit, making money, right? I'm going to in and out. We can capitalize on it a lot better. I'm a lot, I'm a lot faster, a uh, little bit more agile than those that are holding long. And then this 
new sort of foundation of retail trading that, again, is making up about 25% of our volume again. It's different this time than back in January where the underlying assumption was that things were going to sort of always keep going up and they were going to go to new highs and there was sort of an experience really leading to the overly bid sort of prices. This time is a, a lot more subdued, right? There's some actually nice trading going on. Uh, liquidity is not all over the place. And so you have these calls that are very volume heavy around a certain number. And so a lot of the times you, you now see instead of buying the most out of the money call for whatever reason, that was the thing in January, we now do see this sort of, uh, sort of uh, condensed at the money approach, which is how it should be. People should be buying at the money uh, and going from there. That's sort of the way in which the, the coin sort of continues to show here. And so uh, instead of a coin flip on, uh, on something that is so out of the money, uh, you have to get lucky. Now people understand that you can sort of bend that a little bit uh, and, and buy something that's a little bit safer, right? That's sort of the, uh, the, the experience, the learning experience that people get, right? Uh, in terms of, in terms of other things, uh, there's, there's not much uh, on the sector side we can mention. We can mention, uh, semiconductors again today, holding these over the weekend. I think this is a nice, uh, continued approach that it, there's, I don't know if this is even risky anymore. You know, NVIDIA has really been the shining uh, chart out of all of the semiconductors that we've just stuck in. I haven't had to do anything here. There's really nothing to transition or anything either. You just kind of put new positions on once they fizzle out. Uh, and so this side of things, again, has been doing very well, but some of the charts are, are just not, not doing as much. AMD still is bearish. There's been no retail buying on AMD. Uh, this was a meme stock that now is just sort of back to its, I don't know, this sort of bearish sort of look. Uh, it's not bearish. The sector's bullish, but there's really not much here. Looking for something like this next week to pick up with the sector. When you when you look at the overall average, uh, it it does look like that. And so it's not so much to say that this the sector is not really going hot. It's just that, for instance, Nvidia just looks ten times better. It's just so much better. And so I'd rather be a part of that, right? But we're going to keep our eyes open for the rest of the sector. I think it's important uh, to, to keep in mind. Also, we, again, had this crazy bio week. So I'm just going to mention it again. Just, this week was completely taken over by healthcare uh, and bio news, right? And basically, every single day this week, we've had something that just really popped off. Uh, charts that we've been looking at, right? Um, just about every single one of the charts that really took off, we had already, I had already sort of drawn out uh, at least a couple weeks ago. And... That's again something that it should be thought of a little bit is that most times with the healthcare and bio side, if there's a breakout, it's most likely leading to something. It's it's been too common that we've seen that there's some sort of technical break on something that doesn't even make sense, right? And then all of a sudden they get some some good news coming out. Uh Again, don't you don't wait for news to then trade things. If news comes out and then you're trying to trade it, then you're just momentum trading. But there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to understand there's a difference. Just like with the retail meme stocks, you're you're basically day trading. You're in and out, right? Uh, this next week is probably going to be pretty interesting because, again, it's a question of whether these are trends. Uh, when we talk about things like the Moderna chart, is this a is this going to be the trend? Uh, are we where are we going? Right? What do we, exactly are we what are we pricing in? There's nothing, uh, there hasn't been anything, right? And so what are we pricing in? And that's, as soon as you ask that question, you go, well, there, we must be pricing something in and we must be speculating on something, have some sort of expectation. I've mentioned my opinion plenty. It's, it's most likely true. It's most likely true that we're gonna get some things out. So we're gonna continue with these positions uh, and, and not be doing the, well, I've gained enough. I might as well exit this. And it's, it's pretty high. I don't know if it can go any further. We're not going to have any of those discussions. We're going to continue to push these positions because uh, the market is is strongly, strongly backing the entire the entirety of the healthcare uh, sector. So we're, we're going to keep playing with this, and uh, we'll keep asking the question. Right? We'll keep asking it and seeing if there is something there, and uh, if we get the news at some point that. Uh, there's going to be something backing up some of these things. So we've already seen bios this week, obviously get some FDA approvals that are apparently on shaky ground. So 
it's really not that hard for the rest of uh, the government to sort of, you know, uh, capitalize on that and continue with it and think there's some expectation. The other side was the stores, the retail stores themselves. We saw a lot of bid this week, so uh, we don't really need to look at many of the charts, but when we look at, um, there's, there's just this, this obvious sort of start to the new bid. And so charts like FL going into the weekend, these are must. We talked about the Macy's chart, right? These are must going into the weekend. Uh, you had CPI numbers. You had a reaction from the very open. And then all of a sudden, these charts realized that the market's actually going to all-time highs in the upside. And so a lot of these had nice days today. And so we've mentioned plenty of these charts. Uh, there's, there's, there's plenty of them, right? And that's sort of... Uh, why can I not spell urban? Holy... Whatever, I, I can't spell. Uh, wow. Uh, but we mentioned plenty of these charts. And they had a very nice day again today, leading into the weekend. And so it's important to remember what we just saw with numbers. Uh, CPIs were at, you know, the high since 1992. Inflation, that means people are spending money. And there's a, there's a continuation factor there, right? They're going to keep spending money. And so these are our charts or i mean they're just they're tickers that they're tied to those numbers if those numbers are going up then these prices will go up on the equity side right and so again it's important that we are completely tied to what we see and so these were pretty straightforward and so i think most of the market price them uh, the way they're supposed to some of them like i said kind of took profit thursday so they offered really nice entries uh but there really was not much there in terms of argument okay makes sense anything on the consumer side should go up right uh otherwise things like docu we continued on this was a lot of fun this week with uh with this trade going uh off of last week sort of when we saw this i sort of uh, we talked about well that's just going to come back up to this range isn't it and so there's some of these charts that are big names that we've talked about on the tech side that we need to continue to be a part of possibly netflix coming into next week as well right uh, coming out of the low end of the range. We'll keep our eye open, right? See if these come up out. Twitter did it. Uh, this is sort of what the COVID winners look like down here. Netflix, not a COVID winner, kind of is, but these these tickers that are down here, going to be really watching for these next week. Uh, we have not been bottom fishing, but it, there's a po there's, there is a point at which the market's trading through all-time high. Tech is going crazy. Uh, these charts that are at lows are probably going to come out of it, right? And so... We want to catch it before, earlier than later, right? If we can, we don't want to have to momentum trade them. Uh, and so, you know, that, that really summarizes things. Uh, in terms of next week, the macro sort of side, I, I do think there might be some some dollar things. We saw the dollar sort of bid today. Uh, there's not really any reasoning behind any of this. So uh, I think we're looking for some confirmation next week on the macro side. This week was surprising on the bond side. And it is something that we can't, we can't ignore just because everything else is risk on and bid. The, there are sort of these rumblings going on and uh, on the bond side and then how we see the dollar reacting. Uh, there has been no correlation between the bond market and the equity market. Used to be the 60-40 portfolio. That's gone away. But what we saw was yields reach a complete, the, the lowest point they've been in a long time. And then we saw some sort of reactions after cpi of everything that we've already been doing but we can't minus the day in which yields kept they, they kept they kept going further and further down and so if next week we see some some further yield action to the downside right so more bonds are being bought while we're still going through all-time highs on the equity side and everything else has sort of remained the same commodities are going up whatever uh then we need to look at that as okay some of the cash that's out there is being put into bonds for what reason? Is it to hedge their equity positions or are they just sort of trying to rebalance, right? And we've already seen this portfolio shift, right? Of going full equity focused. What are we gonna see if those yields keep going down? Is this buying on the bond side uh, again to hedge or is there something there that they're trying to take the Fed's own advice of saying inflation is transitory, right? The reason why you don't want to be in bonds is if inflation is going to continue, then you're going to have a negative rate, basically. 
if you're buying bonds at this point, then you must think it's transitory and going to go away. What does that mean for the overall portfolio and picture? Uh, I think next week we'll probably see some glimpses of it. If people actually believe that or not, it's, it's again, no one knows. And so it's just, it's all based off of argument and price right now, whether or not that's actually uh, what people think. And so uh, I think that one day was a little surprising. I think it took a little bit of the market off guard because we, again, we sort of came down on Thursday while that was happening, because I think there was an expectation of hedging. And then we started to go bid back up to record numbers yesterday after coming down. And so again, there's, there's some sort of, there's some sort of tie there still that that's kind of keep keeping us on a leash of understanding that there are these sort of macroeconomic pressures of we're all just speculating and don't know. And since we're not going to know for a long time, we all have to have a consensus, right? I think we had a consensus on the risk side. What's the consensus on the bond side? I think we're going to find out next week. So it's something we'll watch. We'll look at the yields, see if they're dicking around and uh, whether the bond villains come out and try to get the Fed to to talk about something. And otherwise, uh, in, an awesome week, a very bullish week, a money that uh, a week that we could make money on, right? Uh, and not be too slow and not too passive. Be risky. Take short-term trades. Uh, it's going to continue into next week. So we're going to keep hunting. And, uh, you know, we keep our long positions. But as we transition them, maybe look for something a little bit spicier, right? Something a little bit more risk-on oriented. Uh, and not being afraid that as we go through all-time highs, it doesn't mean you're all of a sudden going to lose it, right? Not all of a sudden because you're at a high does it you have to go to a low. That's not how price works. You don't all of a sudden go to a high and then have to go to a low. Just because it seems, you know, you're traveling through God knows where and you see the record number all the time. It doesn't matter. Things will continue. We'll continue to, you know, hunt for things. Uh, and I'm excited for next week because this week was a lot of fun. So I'll see you guys on Monday. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, and until next time, enjoy.